right into it. <laughs> right? Oh, crap. We're, we're back, but I forgot to check what <laughs> episode we're on. Welcome back to 45? Behind the Bikini. No, we're way past that. We're on like 49. Oh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm pulling it up. Hold on. Like, subscribe, comment. There we go. All the all those things. We're on 49. We're on 49. I knew we were close to 50. I knew Never we were listened to, to me. <laughs> Never. Never. I'm like, ever. I don't even look. It's Monday. It's it's Monday is one of my busiest days. I know it is for you too. So yeah. it's like, <laughs> but we got to do what we got to do because we got shows coming up this weekend. You're traveling again on Thursday. So we Wednesday. try to shoot on or Wednesday. Yeah, that's right. Because it's Tampa. That's right. That's such a long show. That's such a long show. Yes. It's but you're from there. Days. Yeah. yeah. But you're from there. So you get to at least you're kind of like home. You know what right. I mean? Right. So, used to yeah used to it nowhere to go and yeah yeah definitely take some pressure off yeah so like comment subscribe you said that already we're on episode 49 wherever we are and today's topic <laughs> today's topic we're going to talk about knowing when you're ready to be on stage because i think we see that comment all the time like when we talk about people that are like writing into to forums and facebook groups and things like that they're asking am i going to be ready for my show in five weeks or whatever it may be and so we're going to kind of go into that some things to be looking for for yourself now obviously you don't trust your coach and everything too but there's some things that you personally can be paying attention to but before we do all of that of course so we've got tampa pro coming up so you're traveling on wednesday so um i this is the first time i haven't been to that show in like five years <laughs> i'm like i'm gonna have like massive fomo i've already been checking the the ipb site for the the pro list and it's not out yet so I've been it's like, not no i was refreshing it's it a couple times usually today. like no, no, you're right. It should have been yeah, out by, by now. Up now. It's usually like 4 p.m. EST. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. So, I know that there's something shifting around right now, like people that were having some issues and pulling out and things okay. like that. So maybe they're still trying to solidify that. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's a big show. Like I'm, I'm, I'm having massive FOMO already because I'm. <laughs> it's not that week yet. I'm like, damn it. <laughs> Yeah, like the one show that they have like massive lists to make. Uh -huh. It's like pretty much yeah. all the pros, the pros, yeah. right? They have like every division for the pros. So I'm pretty sure they have every division plus masters too. Right. So, you know, that's why the show is so long because they start with masters on Thursday. So people, or I'm sorry, Friday, because check ins are Thursday, right? Is that how it goes? I think there, I think there is masters on Thursday. Well, that's there? why we're flying in on Wednesday because we yeah. needed to be there Thursday for some of our masters athletes. You're right, because that's the same thing. That's why I did that last year, because I went in on Wednesday because yeah. I had master scrolls and then on Thursday. I literally just had this conversation with Drew on the way back from the gym. We were going back and forth. He's like, I need yeah. to look at the schedule, and we yeah. haven't looked at the schedule yet. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a hard show for master's athletes to do, because if they want to do open, they got to stay till Saturday to Saturday. do open. So it's yeah. a pain in, the, pain in the butt, basically. They got to yeah. start, they got to rework that. I think that it would be better if they did it like, like these other shows do where they put like all of the women on one day and they have the masters and the pros and, and masters and open and then all the men. The next I've, day. I've said that literally for the last two years. Yeah. I feel like the schedule needs to be a little bit moved around. Yeah. NPC in itself takes an entire day sure and like NPC the last two, three years, these people aren't getting off stage till like midnight like when yeah. i when i in 2020 when i won the overall as an amateur like i did not walk off that stage to, yeah to 1 yeah. a.m um and then it got a little bit better but i mean still like that's a long day for the athletes it's a long day for us as coaches sure especially coaches that are doing like the you know the, the pro show too coaching mm -hmm. pro show i know I, I definitely think there needs to be some moving around on that but still hasn't after all these years <laughs> i don't know why it doesn't make any sense like I, I i mean maybe they just do it because they really want to sell the audience out or something i don't really know like i don't know why they do it because for i think they would just have more people show up because that's I've, I've had masters athletes that i work with that won't do the show because they don't want to have to be there the whole week you know blame them. It's, it's, expensive. it's expensive it's really expensive it's, it's expensive. expensive it's expensive hotel like and, yes. and don't get me wrong i love the hotel but i mean that that adds up another three hundred dollars right. for a couple sure of does. nights you know yep yep so i get it I get yeah it. no i mean we just talked about that because you know for a couple of shows i'm going to be rooming with one of my girlfriends and we're like damn this cuts our expenses in half you know what i mean like it's just the most expensive thing about competing is the hotels. I mean, it's more expensive than the than the flights. It's more expensive than anything. It's the hotels, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. Those don't get any cheaper. <laughs> yeah. So well, how was USA's? It was really, really good. Um, yeah. Very well run. Um, yeah. yeah. I mean, the, the 
the, the classes were definitely smaller. I know that they, that they were, you know, kind of saying that it was going to be a smaller show. It was definitely smaller, but that was the first muscle contest I've ever been to as a coach, as a, mm-hmm. I've never participated in a, as an athlete. Um, but it was very well run. Everything was, was really great. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was great because the women went on Friday. So we flew yeah. in on Thursday morning, super early, and I'm only an hour flight from California. So just had like a nice easy morning, got on a, got on a flight, got there around like nine o'clock, checked Ashley in. And then we were just kind of able, they had a really great gym there. It was a great hotel. So I was able to go down, do a workout with her, got my cardio in. Um, but yeah, the whole show as a whole was great. Um, we only came home with one pro card, but we only had, I think, I think we only had like 10 total athletes from, from Fit Body. Um, so pretty much the majority of them were all in class B, which oh, sounds, really? yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, but the classes were, were smaller. Like some of them had like 12. I think the biggest class had somewhere around 20, but that was only mm-hmm. one of the classes. Um, but yeah, it was super, super fun. It was a great show. Yeah. I, the last time I was there, I don't go out there, out there very often because it's the West coast, you know what I mean? And for me, it just doesn't make sense to go all the way out there. So I went out there I think it was 2019 was the last time I was out there. And that used to be a two day show as well. So it was this like is the first year it's not. Yeah. Yeah. And so I'm glad Vegas. they did that. Yes. Yeah. Yep. So it was a lot, it was fun, you know, and I've gone, out, I went out there for it a few times, but it's expensive. Exactly. It's expensive. Two, you know, two makeup, two hair, four tanning. Yeah. It's, mm-hmm. that's a lot on the athletes. I, I thought that was ridiculous. So I'm glad yeah. that they changed that. Yep. Same thing with nationals it, when it was in Miami and Miami, Miami was so expensive. So, Oh, I remember that was my first national show I ever went to. I was like, oh. yeah. Uh-huh. yeah, it's crazy. I mean, it really is like at the end of the day, it's like, you shouldn't be spending more on your travel than you are on the show itself. <laughs> you know what I no mean? Kidding. Like, <laughs> no kidding. But some of these like hubs for bodybuilding is, you know, yeah. we always say, you know, bodybuilding is, is not a poor man's sport. I mean, this is no, a, this is not. just like cheer, like competitive cheerleading and uh, lacrosse. Like, you know, I, because obviously we have a lot of athletes that transfer out of like a, yeah. a sport like that. And then they're very used to competing because it's very similar, but um, you know, a lot of these hubs of bodybuilding, it's in expensive areas, mm-hmm. you know, so the hotels are expensive. Miami yeah. is not cheap. I think that's yep. a, another reason why it's not there anymore. Because yeah. Probably that bill, you know, yep. it. but yeah, it's the, you, you, one thing that we, you know, I was going to say for our podcast today is to consider if you're ready for a show is if you're financially sound or not, because these shows, one show can cost you three to five thousand dollars. You know, depending Absolutely. on where you're traveling to and what you're needing to spend money on. So yep. it's a Absolutely. lot. Well, and then there's the ease of access to the shows too. Like I think one of the reasons why people love the Pittsburgh shows so much is because everything is the same venue. Like you don't have to go anywhere. You're right in that one spot. You know, it's it's what twenty minutes from the from the airport or whatever. It's easy it's access. Not it's not. It's really not expensive in comparison to some of these other places. Pittsburgh, even though it's a city, it's really not expensive like Miami or something like that. You sure. know, so it's really not. It's really not that bad in comparison. You know, and then the same thing. The Definitely. same thing we're talking about, like the universe and New York shows, because they're all in Jersey. They're not in actually in New York. People are just like, why don't they do it in Manhattan? I was like, because it'd be a pain in the ass to get anywhere, and it'd be expensive as hell. <laughs> Talk about stress. Like, yeah. could you imagine a show in the middle of downtown? New York Pro. City? New York Pro used to be in New York City. It used to be in New York City. I think it was like the Tribeca Theater or something like that. And it was to like the hotel you had to walk to the to the venue. Oh, it, no. Could you imagine? No, like, I like being just close enough. Like that that yes. hotel in New Jersey is perfect because you, you yes. really want to go out in New York. You just, it's like a 30 minute Uber ride. Just go right, right. back into the city. It's It wasn't bad. Yeah, that's plenty yeah. of space. Yeah. And that's what I mean, that's a lot of times when I'm there. That's what I do the last day. Like I'll stay and I'll go into the city for a little bit. Cause, you know, I just yeah. like I just like New York City personally. But, um, you know, and, and you're right. It's a 30 minute or Uber ride. You can take the train in, you can take a bus in, you can, whatever. You know what I mean? You can do that. It's right there. But you're not stuck in that for the show itself. So if you need to go get water, you know, <laughs> you're not stuck trying to find where to go get water or something stupid like that, you know. So those are all these little details matter. <laughs> yeah, these are all things 
things that you think about, you know what I mean? So, and I know promoters plan for this kind of stuff too. A lot of times, like they'll, they'll make sure that they make things um, easily accessible. Like when I did Hawaii, that was one thing I did like about that is that the, the hotel, when you walk outside, there's a planet fitness right there. There's a target right there. You know, everything's right there. Like you so can walk nice. to everything. So, so you know, convenient. sometimes you can't have the, the venue be attached to the hotel. Sometimes that's not possible, but they try to make it as easy as possible in that, in that respect, you know, which is right. something I, that's something I take into consideration when I'm looking at shows. It really is. Oh, me too. Me too. It's, it's stressful otherwise. <laughs> I get stressed like the more Uber rides I have to take when I'm competing, yeah. like, because it's not just about, about where I'm going to, it's the total amount of time that I'm taking away from the day. Correct. So like the day before show, I don't want to be, you know, 20, 20, 20 to five minutes to 30 minutes in an Uber. Then I'm like rushing my pump, you know? So it really does make a difference when these promoters find a decent gym where you can do like a decent pump and you yes. don't have to, to take an Uber ride. Um, and that's what like sets my gears off and puts me in a negative headspace. I'm like, oh, yes. now I have to find a new blah, blah, blah. So it really yeah. does matter. And you can tell the, the promoters are getting a little bit better at this. I'm starting yes. to see they're starting to pick some more decent hotels for us, which uh, to me, I would rather spend a little bit more money, but Correct. have everything I need on, on the property. Yeah, absolutely. And that, you know, that goes back to the Olympia. We've talked about this several times and how it was just a mess when it was in, it was in Vegas. And like, we understand like Vegas is like the, the central bodybuilding and all this kind of stuff. But for, as an athlete, that was a pain in the ass. So like, I'm hoping it's a little bit better set up this year with it being at resort world. I think everything is in the same spot, I think. So yeah, they that was said that everything's. Yeah, yeah, they said everything's kind of in the same hub. There, there's like one bridge you have to walk over, but they said it's very similar to Orlando's Olympia, yeah. which that was fine. Like you can yes. just do a little, you know, that's fine. But yeah, yeah, that first year, that was my first Olympia, and it was between three hotels, and I was like, "What's going on?" That was right terrible. Now? Like, wh what? How much time do they think that we have? Yeah, you know? that was terrible. <laughs> Plus, because yeah. you know, because prejudging starts so early too on those at those shows, you don't get to sleep, you don't get to do any of those things, you know. I hate no. early prejudging. <laughs> I hate them. I'm like, now that we've had like the easier ones, because you know, really COVID is what really made the made it easier because they started splitting shows up where the girls were in the afternoon and things like that. So now that we've had those, it's like you almost get spoiled where you don't want to go back to the, the way it used to be, where you had to be on stage at at nine o'clock. You know what I mean? So I know that's why I love the sessions. Like I love when they do like the men first thing in the morning. And they do prejudging and then they follow it with the finals and the girls start at like three and they start yep. judging right in the finals. Like, oh, it's like the perfect setup for us. Yep. I wish more yep. shows would do that. That's what we had this weekend. So I, there was a local show here this weekend. Um, yeah, I do, I I do hear me. It was, it, was, it was small. It was a local natural show. So okay. very small, but the girls were on at three. So I got there at nine. And like I had one of my posing clients actually came and did a session while I was there waiting for for my my makeup and hair appointments. Sure. Start. So it was really easy. Like I, they have three shows a year. This is their smallest one because it's a natural show. But uh, so it was simple. I was like, okay, this is cool. Do do do. <laughs> and we were done. I mean, prejudging was over before four o'clock. It was so fast. And then um, finals was over by five. <laughs> it was just like wow. What a what a cool change of tune for Masters National. I know. <laughs> Well, the thing with this show too is it's literally ten minutes from my house, so like I can stay oh, home, so awesome. I can sleep in. I, you know, I don't have to change anything, any of my schedule or anything that I do. I got up, still had my coffee, still did all the normal stuff that I do in the morning and all that kind of thing. So it didn't wreck my schedule or anything like that. So, which is great. I love that. <laughs> Especially when you're in prep, like I said, yeah. the little things make a yeah. difference, like sleeping in your own bed and drinking right. your own coffee. Like yes. it really does make a world of a difference. Yeah. And then I, then I saved the dog's life, which I don't know if you saw my stories on that. I don't know if you saw it or not. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, the dog, dog that was in the, in the car. car. Why? I don't know. And the thing was, is so I took all my stuff into the venue. It's a, it's a school. So I took all my stuff into the venue and then I left my chair in my car. So I went to get my makeup chair and I'm out there pulling it out of my car and I hear this dog barking and I'm just like, it's, it's 9 a.m. It's not, it's not, so it's not hot yet. You know what I mean? So it's 9 a.m. And I'm looking around, I'm like, where's that coming from? And I noticed it's two, two um, cars down from me and it's just this dog that's in there and locked in the car and just barking. And I'm just like, at first, we, we have one guy that works the shows, and he brings his his dogs with him. So I thought maybe it was one of his. I went inside, and he, no, he had his dogs with him, so it wasn't his. So I was like, yeah, right? <laughs> I thought maybe he was leaving or something. You know what I mean? So 
So I walked down. I was like, does anybody know who this who, the, who belongs? This dog belongs to. I'm backstage, right? And they're like, no, we don't know who this is. They thought maybe it was like one of the judges, and it wasn't. It wasn't. It wasn't one of the judges. So the promoter actually got onto the mic, um, and the auditorium was like, hey, listen, we 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 know there's a dog locked in a car in the in the parking lot. Uh, come to the ticket counter, like bring your dog inside. We're okay with that. Like they said that all over the mic and everything. So the guy came up to the ticket counter and he's like, I, he's like, I had a whole plan. The, 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 the windows are tinted. They're cracked. She's got water, all this kind of stuff. It's going to be a hundred degrees in about an hour. Like it'll leave her at minutes. home. If yeah. you don't want to bring her inside, this is 2024. Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, and this is the other thing too. I said, I was like, okay, okay. Let's just say that your dog's fine and that you do go check on her every five minutes or whatever you planned on doing. Somebody may see her and not be as rational as I was and just smash your car in to get the dog out. I mean, I would. <laughs> if, if we hadn't found who owned the dog, that was my next step. I was going to go smash. Then that was people, people backstage were like, we're going to go smash the windows. And I was like, well, like, let's just, let's, 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 see wait if they're in the, let's see if they're in the audience first. I was like, and then we'll call the police. That's the next thing that we'll do. You know what I mean? So, but I mean, and th the thing was, is he brought the dog into the show and she laid down and she slept the whole show. Like, <laughs> some, I'm like, people just so don't think. Agitating. Yeah, people don't think. I'm like, you do realize it takes less than five minutes for her to overheat and just like, boom, we're done. My dogs will not stand outside right now for more than five minutes. I took down all their toys today. So I just want yeah. them to exercise. Literally, they're passed out right now. They literally will not. Like, they just go right to the door after two minutes. They just don't want to be in the heat. It's so yeah. hot for them. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, my God, that really agitates me. Like, leave your dog at home. That's right. I was like, I just... I'm like, how do you not, how do you not put two and two together here? I was like, I just don't. Yeah. People bring their dogs now all the time to bodybuilding shows. Right. I love it. I know. You see them all the time. And I, think, I, I think the dog was even a service animal because I think the promoter said something about the fact that he put like a service vest on her and brought her in. So I think the dog was even a service animal. Like just bring her in the freaking school. Like this just keeps getting worse. Like I know. You have every reason to bring the dog inside. I know. You know, you don't leave her out there. You come in and you ask. Say right. like, is it okay to bring her in? If not, then you take her home. Like you said, right. you don't. You take her home. Well, thank you for doing that. <laughs> I was like, like I said, I was like, I did my good deed. I was like, I saved the dog, and nobody's car's got, car got smashed up, so nobody got arrested. So it was good. I, good I would be the girl day. backstage getting ready to go on and be like, all right. Yeah. Give me the jackhammer. I don't care if I'm not going on stage right now. Right? Save the Seriously. Dog. Save the dog. I don't Save care. Like <laughs> your your windows, your windows can be fixed. The dog cannot be brought back. You know what I mean? So but anyway. <laughs> it's like it's like I just you know, just people are just so like they just don't think they're so absorbed in their own self sometimes. They just don't think about anything else. Like I just don't understand how you don't put two and two together with that. I just well don't he had a that. plan. He he had a plan, but you know, <laughs> needed to think that plan through just I know. a little bit more. Just a little bit more, just a little. Well, but anyway, yeah. So so how's your prep coming? Prep's good. Prep's really good. Um, I, I don't know. I check in with Jamie tomorrow. I think I think we're gonna get a little bit more aggressive. We were kind of cruising the last couple of weeks, which I'm fine with. Um, mm -hmm. I was down to 123, and then this morning I popped back up a pound. So clearly some inflammation or something going on. So we'll see what tomorrow's weight is. But I think we're about like six, seven ish weeks out right now. Yeah. So yeah, we're we're super close though. We're right there. I'm I'm fine to push right now. I haven't suffered this entire prep. Yeah. But, um, yeah, things are really, really good. My training is really good right now. I just feel really blessed. Like I just good. feel really good. Like recovery is on on its game. I just got um, I just got the um, compression um, leg yeah, sleeves. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are been so nice. Like okay. we have like a pre workout setting, and then obviously like a post or like a recovery setting. So those really really are nice i got i came back on saturday from usa's which is so nice because i had basically half a saturday and all a sunday um but my like my legs are aching just from like the travel yeah. and things like yeah. that and i just put those on right away 30 minutes later and i was like ooh, ooh, 
I feel like I could go work out right now. So I went and, and trained. Um, so yeah, everything's just kind of moving right along. So we'll see what nice. tomorrow's check-in brings, but so far so good. You could nice. definitely see that I'm getting diet baits for sure. I know. I know. Isn't <laughs> yeah. that like I start taking photos. And I'm like, Oh my God, like, where did yeah. that, like, it's like, it's just like all of a sudden it's like, you're just skeletal, you know, even right now I don't have, like, I don't have any bronzer on it or anything. I'm like, I am so white. Sharp. And I'm so sharp. I'm like, plus I've got the dark hair. I'm like, I look like a fucking vampire right now. I'm like, a sexy I'm gonna, vampire. I'm going to come fucking suck your blood. Uh, I'm, anyway, I'm like, that's literally what I see when I look at my veins. I've got the veins. I've got the veins coming through. You can always, you can always tell your I for me, I'm always telling them I'm getting lean when I see the veins popping out. Even when I'm just, when my face is just relaxed and the veins start popping in my temples, that's when I know that I'm I'm there. That's when I know that I'm getting there. You know, like because I, I went and did a consultation about the veins here um, last year when I was in prep because I started seeing pop started seeing them popping and um, the the lady she's like I, she's like if I put filler in there now it's just gonna look weird and you can put your face fat back on. <laughs> she's like so it's just like it's just something something I have to deal with. But that's that's something that I noticed. Anyway, something I'm trying this week. I'm seeing my injector this week. She recommended something for my under eye. I have mm -hmm. always had super dark under eyes, but obviously competing does not help the situation. Yeah. So she was like, why don't you come? And we're doing that treatment where like they pull your blood out and then they spin it. PRP. And they put some of it. Yeah. So they're going to mm -hmm. put some of that like under my eye. I don't know what she's doing. I just say, I just trust her with my life. So I'm like, okay, if you say this is good, like whatever. How long do I have to be out of exercise? 24 hours. I'm like, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. We can do that. We'll, yeah. see. we'll see. I'll let you guys know yeah. what i think but it's going to be some like under eye treatment just to kind of like lift this up a little bit and make this yeah. a little bit brighter and a little bit i did eye. i did under eye filler last year i did um, yeah because that same thing i was getting the dark circles i really noticed it last year and that made a world of difference like it was yeah, almost it was like immediately looked like i had taken a 10 hour nap i was yeah. like ah oh, okay and it hasn't and i haven't had to redo it since i mean that was that was a long time ago that was la during prep last year so That's it made amazing. a big difference. So yeah, well, I hope so. Because like when I, I hope I don't have to get that lean. But when I get that super skeletal, like it looks like my eyes are like sunken into my sockets, and it's a little, it's a little creepy. My bow, I didn't have Botox. I had this one photo. If you guys message me, I'll show it to you. There's this one photo where I took it with an athlete last year, and I looked at it. I was like. Oh my god, I look sick. Like really, really <laughs> sick. I haven't had to get that deep yet, so I hope I don't get back to that point. But it was scary, and I took that to me, and I'm like, fix this face <laughs> right now. Oh god. <laughs> I, yeah. So I'm trying to think. I haven't done fillers in a while, but it was like I've done sculpture. I've done sculpture in my in my smile lines, which made a big, big difference. Um, I've done the filler under my eyes, which again made a big difference. I've done I've done what they do the, the liquid facelift, which I haven't had to do in a while, but that they put filler here so that pulls everything up. Ooh. So I actually haven't had to do that. I think the reason I haven't had to do that is because I did the sculpture in my smile lines. So that's kind of where I would see it and things like that. How so long ago that. did you do that? Sculpture was last year. Um, wow, that's that's lasted a long time for you. That's a good return so, on investment. Yeah, Sculptra is, is a little different than regular filler. So it's more expensive. Okay. But the reason why is because it uses your own skin's collagen. So it doesn't it doesn't show up right away because it's your own skin your or your own body making the collagen there in your skin. Makes sense. So when you first get injected, it fills out because you're inflamed, right? So that's what my injector said. She was like, she's like, this is what you're going to look like when it's done. She's like, the inflammation is going to go down and you're going to look like nothing happened, right? Mm. So Sculptra doesn't actually take an, take effect for like six months. It takes a while. It, it, like it. you won't see the full effect from it because it's your body actually doing it itself. So it doesn't that's go cool. away. So it just, it goes away with the natural aging process, right? Just like anything else. So when you're still like, once you get up into your fifties, and stuff like that it's harder for the sculpture to be effective because your body's just not producing the collagen like it used That's to right so at that point you gotta just you just gotta do fillers right but right. while you still have your body producing the collagen then the sculpture is a good option because again it, then it doesn't look like a filler because it's your body it's it's your collagen and your skin that's, that's nice. going in and go, going into that spot so I didn't know but, that. Thank you for yeah. the, for the education on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's and it is it's more expensive than filler, but again, it doesn't go away. It just diminishes with your natural aging process because it's you. Okay. And again, I'd rather spend a little bit more money yeah. for a higher return on investment. Correct. For sure. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And like I said, yeah. I think that's the reason why I'm, I'm like, I haven't had to do the face, the facelift thing because I believe, because I did that. Now that I'm just thinking about it. I'm like, I haven't looked at it and been like, oh, I need the, the lift. I'm like, I don't need it. 
So look at us yeah. aging in reverse. <laughs> We can love this sport for that reason. Right? But right now I'm like trying I'm trying to hold out on my Botox touch up because I'm like right in that weird spot of we're almost to when I'm gonna be competing. So it's like, you know, I'm the same same thing. I'm like somewhere around seven, eight-ish weeks out, depending on what show we do. And Botox is every like eight-ish weeks. So I'm like, I'm trying to hold out for like a couple more weeks just so that I don't have to do it like three times while I'm in shows. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just trying to try to wait just a little bit longer. It's I know. Me. It's I know. Me. I mean, my girl's in Tampa. <laughs> so like when I'm in Tampa, I just got to make the most of all of these appointments as I can because I'm not going back to Tampa from now to the Olympia. That's not a yeah. plan. So yeah 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 <laughs> i'm like but I, i'm getting I'm, my i'm getting my hair extensions back in on thursday too. yeah you were just saying that so. before we before yeah. we logged on yeah that's awesome yeah. so the next time you guys see me i'm just gonna you know then <laughs> then the true j athlete will come back out yeah are you are you keeping this hair color are you going a little okay yeah i am keeping the brown caramel this year yeah okay. you know so i listen i love blondes like i yeah. always wanted to be blonde and i had fun with it but it destroyed my hair and I didn't want to take any more chances on it. My hair is really healthy right now. It's coming back to life. Um, so yeah, I just, I made the tough call that I don't, I, I can't be blonde this year. Plus when I was kind of going into like the, should I do it? Should I not? It was right around the women's seminar at the beginning of this year. And I just got my hair colored. Mm -hmm. um, JM was there and Etela and they both said, we really like this color on you. Maybe you should yeah. try to wear it on stage this year. And I was like, oh really? Like, you know, I'm kind of going back and forth. So that kind of gave me another like, uh, you know, a confidence boost of, okay. You know, cause you go back into like, I found my look, right. And we talk right. about that all the time on here. When you find your look, like there's no reason to switch it, but right. when health is in order, we got to figure it out. So I'm going to try to come out with this color with my blue suit and kind of see how we look and, and things mm -hmm. like that. And then I can always, you know, change it up if I need to, but yes, my intention is to keep this for health purposes and long-term, you know, just making sure I take care of my hair. You know, we, yep. we don't, so often we only think about right now, Yep. what's best or what mm -hmm. we think we want and not long term and you know we really have to be you know all of us have to be better at that like long term yep. and five to ten years from now when i'm done competing like i still want to have a head of hair right know? yeah no so. i mean like we were just saying aging in reverse i mean there's a reason why i went dark i'm like i i it's way healthier and like this year i'm not gonna even have to put extensions in because i I don't need them. I'm full enough. Yeah. Like even last year when I was, when I did my two shows, I only had one left of the, of the extensions in, and that was just for a little bit more fullness and now yeah. I don't need it. So, yeah. Yeah. and that's just cause Before I don't really... I had super thick, like yeah. long hair. It was almost like too thick. And now I have, you know, I added, I added in the extensions my first year because I, when I started competing, I had a bob. My hair was super, super short. Yeah. So I needed it for the length. And then I just loved it. Like I love long hair. So eventually I hope that it will grow back out again and things like that. But in the meantime, you know, just, I, it's already come such a far away since I took them out. Yeah. So with this little amount of time, it's been like six months. So I can only imagine like when I'm done and, you know, get my hair healthy again, like truly, truly healthy. And it's going to be awesome. So yeah. yeah, I'm excited though. Super, super yeah. excited to get the, I think once you start putting in the extensions and start doing your Botox, you know, all of your like pre-stage stuff, it starts to get a little bit more real. So yep. I'm, I'm getting sure does. excited. It yeah. sure does. And you start seeing those little things and stuff like that. Like that was one of the things that came, why I was thinking about this, this topic this week, because myself and then also one of my um, presentation clients, Jennifer, she's about to do national fit show. So we're just seeing how those things like just start happening really, really fast. Like you start seeing all those, those signs that you're getting ready for the show and all of that. So it's like, we're, I think you and I are kind of both in the same, the same spot right now it's like you said we're, we're getting to that point where like we can see the light at the end of the tunnel <laughs> you know what i mean yeah so um so we wanted to talk about that for the topic so let's go ahead and jump right into that so some things Perfect that segue. we can yeah right i know i was like i was going to see where we can pull that out from but um, here we go so things that we see when we start getting stagely i'd just like to take a moment to welcome our new channel partners prosis if you're unfamiliar with them, go ahead and go down into my description box now, click on the link, go check out their site. They are the leading supplement sports nutrition company based out of Portugal, been around for 17 years. You might be asking what makes Prozis unique? Well, everything that they make is made in-house or with trusted partners. They have to go through rigorous testing in Portugal in order to even get any products on the market. So what you're going to find, you're going to find really high quality 
pure supplementation. And one of the biggest things for me is I have some GI issues. So being able to eat some of these more healthy protein treats and things like that and not have any gut issues, oh, worth its weight in gold. Go check them out. Click on the link in my description box below. Use the code CUTIES10 to get all of your discounts and even some special surprises. They're always putting out some amazing promotions. Let them know that I sent you and let me know what you think. Thanks again for watching and thank you for supporting our channel. Now, go optimize your own athletic abilities and check out Prozis.com. The hardest thing I think for a lot of competitors is when they're new, they don't know what to expect. Um, and you know, the body is going to be ch different every time. There's going to be things that change every time that are going to be different. But as you move along, you start to see things and coaches know when you're getting ready as well. So, you know, what are some things like, let's say you've got an athlete that's in prep and they're within that one month time frame. Like what is something that you can tell them to kind of tell them to look for, to reassure them that they're on the right path and that they're going in the right direction? What's something that you would say to them? Well, I think the number one thing that they are noticing is their conditioning, mm -hmm. right? And especially for a first time athlete too, I think that the amount of conditioning can be confusing because it's your first time getting this lean. Mm -hmm. And I think that the perception of yourself is, you know, to us as a coach, we know that you need to be more conditioned, but to right. you at four weeks out, this is the best conditioning you've ever had in your life. And you're like, really, I need to be more conditioned than this. Mm -hmm. um, so conditioning number one, you know, so obviously things that we look for in bikini are the tie-ins. Coach, do I have tie-ins? I don't have tie-ins. Do I have tie-ins? Do I have tie-ins? And while tie-ins are not everything, it's a really good, you know, um, example or, you know, what, what am I trying to say? Like a firm uh, data point if you are lean and or if you have enough tissue because you can yes. still be super, super lean but not have a tie-in because you don't have glute density, right? So that's why a lot of this is not absolute statements. It's just Correct. like general things and what the athlete does have. So obviously tie-ins, number one. Number two, like, and this is something that you kind of have to teach yourself, um, but on your stomach, if you kind of like roll your skin around, so obviously I still have some body fat. So if I mm -hmm. roll and pinch my fingers, it almost feels like Rice Krispies. Mm. That's, but that's still body fat. So yep. if you kind that's of right. roll your fingers around and you still are kind of feeling some thickness underneath the skin, you still have some body fat to go. Like when mm -hmm. you're truly peeled, you're just going to be able to kind of pull that skin pull and it. you're just going to feel like water, slippery, slicky underneath. Mm -hmm. um, so sometimes I'll have my athletes like on FaceTime, I'll be like, hey, can you pull your skin? Can you kind of roll it around? What do you feel? Like, what does it feel like? Or underneath the glutes. Yes. Um, and then with the shoulders too, like you can already start seeing, like you start to get like that, that, you know, teardrop mm -hmm. line or that sharp line again, but you could be that lean and not have that. It just depends on your density. And this is, this goes back to first time athletes. You know, some of us just don't have that amount of tissue yet. So it's about finding a coach that can find that balance of bringing you in condition, but also still have some muscle on you so that you don't just look skinny and flat. So yes. those are a couple of things that I think that you could start with. And I agree with that. Like I, I the, the pinch test, right? We did this on Jennifer a few weeks ago. So she watches this all the time. So I'm sure she won't mind that I'm saying this. Hi, but, <laughs> right? So we were at a group class. And you know, I see her every couple of weeks at least because she comes to our group classes and stuff like that. So, you know, we had her there and we had another athlete there that was about to get on stage for Masters Nationals. And I said, do you guys mind if I, if I just pinch you and just show you, right? So the girl that was getting on stage for Masters Nationals, she was lean, like lean, lean. Like actually her issue at Universal, she was too lean. So she needed to fill out. So I was like, you know, the pinch difference in the hamstrings with her versus Jennifer. I said, Jennifer, you've got a few more pounds to lose, you know, because we're going for next month. I said, but she's ready. Like you can see the difference in the skin. You can see, you can feel the difference in that skin. And it, until you see something like that too, as a newer athlete, like a comparison like that, it may not make sense. And it may not even make sense when you're seeing it like that either. You know what I mean? Like, cause it's just so minute. It's such, it's, it's such a fine, like it's, it's such a fine detail, fine tuning kind of thing. And everybody leans out a little bit differently as well. Like for example, myself, my stomach never feels like I have that squishiness there because I lean out my stomach first. Like that's where I get super lean. So it's like, even though I'm ready from up here, like what you just did with your pinch test from the back, I'm not, you know, Correct. that's the last thing that comes in. So, you know, you have to understand where you hold your body fat and things like that too. Everybody's going to be a little bit different. Again, going back to Jennifer, I just saw her this weekend after two weeks ago when we did the pinch test and she looks like a totally different person two weeks later. 
It's like, where did you go? And, and, and her skill weight isn't that much different. It's just a couple of pounds. It's just a couple of pounds. But like, I was like, holy Jesus, like you, yeah, you're, you're pretty much ready to go. You know, she's got a little bit left on the lower ab to go just a little touch. So that her waist on super tight, but that's going to be gone in like a week. And then she's done yeah. and she's you ready to You could pull out of chiggers at that point and probably yeah. you know, just a little bit from that. Yes, yeah. exactly. Exactly right. Yeah. Yep. And so it's like, you know, that also comes from the fact that I've, I've also known Jennifer since she first started. I did her very, very first posing session. So I know what her body's going to do. Like I know, we know when she's lean enough, like she's too lean in her quads right now. So we're talking about how to make the quads look a little bit fuller and not striate and all that kind of stuff. You know, we know that though, because her very first show, she was too... I'm smacking my desk. She, she was too lean. Smacking your thighs. Your I know, thighs. smacking everything. Like, getting really animated. Is that the secret? <laughs> yeah, you're right. Exactly. But uh, but we again, we know that from her first show, her very first show, she was too lean in her quads. You know what I mean? So we know that. That was four years ago. It's the same scenario now. You know what I mean? So actually, was that, that happens a lot too to athletes where they're trying to get so lean for the tie-ins or the glutes that they get, you know, over lean in the quads and mm -hmm. they start getting quads splits or mm -hmm. they even get a little too shredded in the midsection that happened to me last year when i went to tahoe they were like you gotta calm down the vascularity in your midsection i'm like in order to get this lean like there's no other way that i that's can right this to get my tie-ins to show you know and that's my my always my thing is i have to keep continuing to build up that density so i don't have to get that lean to see mm -hmm. them that's always a work in progress um but that that is a really fine balance and that happens a lot with athletes that the, you know that you have to sacrifice one thing to expose something else and you kind of right. have to you know pick and choose and play with posing and hopefully with the fill out process as well you know and a really good thing you know we talked about this with the six the six week five week freak out video too is like going into that show those final four weeks before peak week you're going to feel worse before you feel better you're flat nothing's popping you're like why do i feel so small those are all things that are super normal and again that's why like prep goggles are a real thing you probably do look worse but you're mm -hmm. supposed to at that time that's right um so if you feel like you're not getting a pump if you feel like you don't really have lines i wouldn't say that's necessarily a bad thing that means you're getting peeled that that's means right. you are for sure getting peeled you know, my athletes are still having pumps like three, three, two weeks out from stage. Naturally, of course, we're not talking about advanced. Like if they're still getting pumps and they still have some fullness in there. So we still right. have some room to push as far as conditioning goes. Yeah. And that was, that's a great example too, because even this weekend, like I said, I actually saw Jennifer on Saturday and on Sunday. So on Saturday, I was like, you, I'm like, she looked a little flat. She looked a little watery. She looked better on Sunday. And when I saw her on Sunday, she's like, oh, I've got more carbs in me right now than what I had yesterday. So well, that makes sense that you look a little bit better now. Right. <laughs> you know, and she's, and I was like, this is like totally different than what I saw from you two weeks ago. She goes, yeah, it wasn't until the last few days that I started really feeling like I, I look thin. She's like, it wasn't until now that I started feeling like I'm, I'm a lean being, you know, sure. and that's yeah. when, that's when, you know, you're really close at that point. Right. Yeah. And it's and for some people, it's not until you get there that you're like, oh, this is what it's supposed to feel like or, oh, this is what it's supposed to look like. You know, so you, you can't if you're a new competitor, it's almost like you can't you can't take your foot off the gas pedal. Right. Because you just don't know that you're going to what you're going to look like once you get there. You know what I mean? Like some people think, like you said, if they're a few weeks out, and they're still getting pumps. They're not there yet. Right. Yeah. You, you, you got to You got to push through that and get past it. Yeah. And then you're, then you're ready. Then you can start feeding into the show and then you can start filling out and look better and all that kind of stuff. But it, I mean, hopefully they it. fit, they feed into the show. Right. right. And I think that right. that's another point, you know, is that if you are truly stage lean, you should be eating into your show. And I know a lot of us are so afraid to eat into a show mm -hmm. and just to be, you know, res respectful, it's because you don't understand what is actually happening in your body. Right. And if there's one thing for you, if you're sitting here right now and you're watching this and you're like, oh my God, I am petrified to eat going into a show, then you need to educate yourself on literally what's happening when you're depleting and mm -hmm. what is happening in the fill out process. Mm -hmm. When we're feeding you into a show, it's because you are flat yeah. and you have no pop and no definition. If we just continue to get leaner and leaner, I can promise you, you're not going to place well. They yep. want to see pop and they want to see your muscle showing. So literally mm -hmm. when we're, you know, we're grinding into that show and what Sean and I are talking about, like that flat versus pumped feeling, you shouldn't feel like you're getting a pump because literally you have removed 
all of the glycogen Glycogen. out of your muscles to give you that pop. And when we're feeding you into the show, we're trying to restore the muscle glycogen, not put on body fat. That is a, it's different. And I'm, Mm -hmm. and I'm struggling this with right now as a coach, I just had a client that competed a few weeks ago and they were looking flat to me. And then we had a conversation in the room. She was afraid to eat. And I understand that fear, but that's where you really have to start educating yourself on the process. And Mm -hmm. also a lot of these girls are coming from coaches with older styles and maybe they didn't feed into the show or they were pulling water into a show. None of that should be happening if you're truly peeled and stage ready. Um, And again, like we don't expect you guys to know these things, but I do expect that if you're hiring a coach, that means that you have said trust them. And that means that you do not decide on peak week what parts of the plan you pick and choose to follow. Follow that plan to a T because it's for a reason. And if you're not sure and if you're scared of something, ask and have that open line of communication so you can learn and you can understand the why behind things. And if you do ask a question and your coach doesn't have a why behind things, we've talked about that many times. That is a red flag. Yep, absolutely. Yep. And we've t- I think I've mentioned this on this podcast before, but I had a coach once that the dumbest line I've ever heard is he said uh, that peak week is that week where you erase all the mistakes that you made throughout prep. <laughs> it's like, no, that's not how it works. farther from the truth. There's nothing <laughs> no. you can do on peak week nothing. if you screwed up. There's nothing. nothing you can do. It is what it is, and you just take what it is and hope for the best. Like, that's, yeah. No, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Peak yeah. week is not magical. Peak week is not magical. If anything, peak week should look like this. It should not have a peak. It should just go like this. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Dress. You're like, right. Absolutely. The name kind of gives it, you know, yeah. like, oh, it's where, you know, and yes, yeah. you're, you're, you, you are going to come back to life, but it's not these massive swings and changes. It's a little bit here, a little bit here, a little bit here to try to get that outcome. Something else I'm noticing too, which I was like, this is an amateur that your pump up the day before show is not just meant for you to wake up and head to the gym and just get your workout in. There there is a point of a pump up. It is Mm -hmm. to push the water, sodium, and carbs into the muscle so you can fill out and get a pump, right? We just Mm -hmm. talked about flat versus pumped. When you're starting to eat and feed into the show, we want to push that glycogen back in the muscle. So many girls are so nervous about their schedule that they just wake up and go eat and they're fasted. Yeah. What did you pump? Nothing. What What were you actually doing, right? And then when I started coaching with Jamie, you know, and again, I was really like high strung at that time. I was like on my schedule. She was like, I want you to sleep in, go get yeah. two meals in, and then go pump. And I was like, well, why? Why can't I just go? And she was like, what are you actually pumping? And she, she explained this to me. I'm like, duh. This makes so much sense. Why did my first coach never tell me this? Yes. You know what I mean? So like girls too, like I get it the day before show, you're stressed, you have your schedule, blah, blah, blah. But remember, there's a point to the pump. It's not just to go get a final workout in and go, yay, I pumped and check in on Instagram. It is for a purpose for stage on Saturday. (laughs) Yep. Well, that and also the, the whole cutting water thing, because you should never fully cut water ever. Because water is like the car that drives all of your food into the muscle. If you don't have any water in you, you don't have a car to take that stuff into your muscle. It just it just sits there. It just yeah. sits there. And it'll sit in your that, stomach. That happened at uh, Masters Nationals. One of, yeah. one of um, Jamie's athletes that I've watched yeah. for a couple of years now, she came out on her first class and she was right. flat. So Jamie's, yeah. she, Jamie's out there. She's messing. She's like, why is she flat? Blah, blah, Run backstage. I'm like, you ate your pump up meal, right? And I'm the one that made the pump up meal. Like I made it on her back. And I'm like, yeah, I'm like, how much water have you had? She's like, I haven't drank any water. I was like, oh my God. So I'm like, take this up. now. Comes yeah. out like 15 minutes later for her next class. Boom. Pops, yeah. It's glutes, pop shoulders. She was actually pumping. Like you have to have the water to push into. I think people are afraid of water too, because a lot of coaches oh, cut water, do the water loading, like taking diuretics. Peeled. Uh, yeah. Don't eat. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I can tell now when I have a console and I look at like their NPC news online, I'm like, you took a diuretic. And they're like, yeah, yeah how do you not? I'm like, it has a look. It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's a look. Absolutely. No, it's like, you know, it's, it just, again, it goes back to, it should just be common sense, but it's not, you know? And again, because we, because we have all of this bro science out there and because we have all these old outdated methods, things like that, like you said, people are afraid. They're afraid to do what didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work the first time. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, yeah. it's the truth. And I get that. I, yeah. I look back at some of my old photos from other coaches and stuff. And I'm like, oh my God, I look like flat as hell. I look like I have no muscle. It looks like I have, it looks like I have nothing. It looks like I have nothing. 
because I took a diuretic, they cut water the, the day before, you know, all the stuff. Like, it's just, it's just crazy when I look back at it. I'm like, okay, this totally. And we like, didn't know better then. No. We know better now, you no. know, but that's. And that's you a, can't really see yourself. You can't really see yourself objectively either. Because again, I, I look at my photos and stuff from Japan and I'm like, holy shit, I look like I got a lot of muscle. I was like, where did that come from? And it's just because they didn't cut anything. You know what I mean? Right. Like I was eating into the show. I was drinking into the show. Now, again, this is, this is in moderation it's not like you're sitting back there guzzling water either you know but you have to have no. enough yeah right. enough to push the food through you know what i mean yeah. and that and again it's going to be individual to each person what enough actually is right so but the, the, it matters i'm like oh i actually have shoulders i was like oh i actually have glutes oh my god <laughs> like they actually exist because yeah. i have clean water in me yeah it seems it seems so simple. It seems like it should be such common sense, but you're right. A lot of girls are just afraid of it. A lot of girls. I are didn't. Afraid of it. I yeah. didn't know until I knew. You know, and it takes some education and some you know work on your part. Also, some like mental shifting because mm -hmm. you know you go for sixteen to twenty weeks of you know this strict you know regimen and less food and everything that, but should be completely opposite on show day. And that is a good sign that you're ready. If mm -hmm. you're feeding into the show, if your body weight starts to drop, that means that your metabolism is metabolism is starting to come back online and function mm -hmm. again like those are all things to look for like yep. i hate when i'm trying to fill out an athlete and they just keep dropping weight and they check in the next day and they're like yay i dropped another two pounds I'm like no no that's not good gaining. <laughs> it's weird. i'm trying to drop right now but they don't know right they were in 16 yeah. 18 weeks of stepping on the scale every day like i hope i drop a pound i hope i drop a pound i hope i drop a pound you want the opposite in peak right. again if you're truly stage lean now yeah, right. there are athletes that show up on their show week and they're behind and you know we're e eating water air and ice and yeah. you know that is what it is but it's because you're not ready and, th and that's then right. that's something to look for too like you know if your coach isn't really feeding you or if they're saying they're, that you're a little bit behind the situation is going to look a little bit different but yeah. for someone that's truly stage lean you know that's that's some good signs if your coach yeah. wants to feed you and give you water into the show it's a good yeah. thing good good things well, and the other thing too is, again, like I mentioned this with my check-in, I think it was last week where Jamie was like, we're definitely had a schedule, right? For some people, when they hear that, they're like, okay, cool. I can back it off. Like, I was like, no, no, no. This means I need to push harder. You know what I mean? Because I don't want to fall behind because I would rather be ahead. I'd rather be ready two weeks ahead of time so that when I'm going into the show, like you said, I can feed into the show. And when you're there's again there's certain things that, like your loved ones can see too like if they start asking you are you sick <laughs> like uh, they, they start asking you those 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 questions they probably shouldn't be asking you but that probably means that you're pretty close to being ready right like dan whenever he hugs me he's like oh i can tell you're losing body fat you're not he's like you're not fluffy anymore it's like you're hard now you know what i mean like i could feel that you're that you're hard <laughs> like, and the disappointment in there <laughs> when the ass goes away yeah yeah, the, mm -hmm. yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> exactly. No, that's a good thing too. Like, it, and then that's like, that's not you observing yourself. That's other people observing you. And if they're starting to make comments, like visually, that's a good like, thing. Are you okay? Are you sick? Right. And I think too, that athletes are so focused on each week when they check in with the coach that like a change has to be made. Like I want, if she doesn't make any changes to my, this is going on week five tomorrow. If she doesn't make any changes to my plan, like zero changes to my plan. That's the best situation, right? If you check in and they're like, this looks good. Everything's working. No changes. Just like you're saying, I'm not going to pull back. I'm going to keep going because if I can go five weeks in a row with no increase of cardio and no drop in food, that's yep freaking dream and the only thing i have to do is continue to keep my meat high keep pushing food keep my cardio or a uh, training intensity high and then i can just keep my food and cardio the same like that's amazing that's a really great spot to be you don't have to make changes every week if you are continuously checking in with yourself and keep pushing that intensity well and going back to that too like i didn't have a change in my program until this past week she did drop my macros this past week so I'm still, I'm still eating a lot, you know, in comparison to a lot of people, I'm still eating a lot, but I'm at that point now where I'm like, I don't want more cardio and I don't want my food to drop. <laughs> I was like, so I'm going to push harder because I don't want to have to do that in anymore, this anymore. That's right. I want to stay here. I'm like, I, I'm still eating a lot. I can still, you know, and I'm still okay with my cardio and all that kind of stuff. I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to have to suffer more than I have to suffer. You know, I would rather be ready early and have all my food and not have to do over an hour cardio day. That would be great. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> that's where I would love to be. So, you know, I'm not necessarily going to happen, but at the same time, I'm going to do everything in my power to stay there. You know what I mean? So, 
those are the, right. that's that's where I want to be. So, you know, and again, going back to some things that that you'll see on yourself, like for me, we were just talking about like the eye veins. Like when I start seeing these veins pop, I know I'm getting leaner. You know, I, I just noticed it yesterday when I was posing in the gym, my lower back. As soon as my lower back starts to be in, I'm like, OK, it's I mean, I'm, I'm getting there. You know what I mean? Like there's certain things that after you've done this a few times, you'll start seeing things on your body where it's like, OK, I know I know what's happening. You know, I know we're getting there. I know we're almost there. Those kinds of things. And we we're just talking about that with, with Jennifer, too, with her, her quads leaning out, things like that. We see those things. We're like, OK, we're almost there. OK, we like because you, you, you can't rely on the scale sometimes. Like we said, like I haven't really I mean, I've dropped weight, but not a lot. You know what I mean? And especially in the last week, it's been about a pound. You know what I mean? So it's not a lot when you're looking at numbers, but visually it's a, it's a change. You can see when it visually happens. So, you know, again, I'm looking at myself right now in the camera and I can see my freaking jaw like coming in like it didn't look like that last week <laughs> you know what I mean like yeah. it's just there's certain things I'm like sitting here watching my biceps like freaking flex and shit like that wasn't looking like that I've got veins and I'm not doing anything you know what I mean so what are what are some things that you see on your on your frame on your shape or whatever that 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 are indicators for you so for me, we just talked about that, like my lower half is always the last thing to come in. So like when I hit my front pose and in my front hip, I start to see like the hip dip and like that glute line really pop out. And then in my back leg is when I really start to see like my adductor come through. Then I know I'm super close. Um, and this week, just like you said, like I haven't really had a drop. I dropped one pound. That was like the, the biggest scale difference I've seen. And then it went right back up today. So we'll see what tomorrow brings. But in the mirror, I'm seeing a tie-in like all the time right now. So I know visually I'm going to be much tighter in tomorrow's photos than I was last week, mm -hmm. but the scale might not reflect that or even measurements mm -hmm. might not reflect that. But again, that's why we take multiple pieces of data. You know, we take the facet weight, we take measurements, we take photos because even though that my weight might be the same tomorrow, visually, I think I'm going to be a lot tighter. We'll see, but I'm seeing a lot more line separation. Um, you know, when you're getting that flat, you start to see the striations and, you know, each individual muscle, which is not okay on stage, but it is okay when you're depleting. That's right. Um, so yeah, those are all good signs that you're, we're on the right track. Again, we're talking, you know, Sean and I are pros, right? So we do have density. So, you know, it's a little bit different when you're an amateur and maybe you have less muscle. So you might have to kind of overly condition and things like that, which is why, especially in a cutting phase, continue to train hard as heavy, not only for the reason we just talked about with keeping your intensity high for your caloric output and things like that, but to preserve your muscle mass through a cut. I think mm -hmm. people really forget that piece that like when you're cutting, you cannot just tell your body, hey, just just, just eliminate from body here. fat. Yeah. You're going to eliminate some muscle. It's the name of the game. So right. training hard and heavy will protect that muscle as best as you can. That's your number one line of defense. And listen, guys, I get it. You're six weeks out. Food is super low for most amateurs. You're at least at a cardio a day sometimes and mostly more. And the last thing you want to do is go train hard and heavy. But that's the best thing best you way. can do for yourself to, yep. to present your best on that, on that uh, stage when your show day comes. Absolutely. I had a girl that uh, did USA's uh, presentation client. Her first show was Patriots and she won the every overall <laughs> her first show. So she won a, a free entry into USA's. So um, in a matter of less than a week, because she won the overalls on Saturday and then she was on stage at USA's on Friday, she took fourth in her class at, at USA's. So in a matter of a week, she went from never having competed before to placing top five at a national show, right? So yeah. she, um, you know, she's very like type A, like she's very much, she sees every, every little detail, which is fantastic for a first time competitor. Like you can't like, she, like amazing eye for a first time competitor, seriously. And so we were talking about um, her package at USA's and um, she's like, I feel like I need more density in my glutes. I need more upper outer glute. Um, and I was like, yeah, I said, your condition needs to be a little bit tighter. And she goes, yeah, she's like, I can't, she's like, but I don't want to come in tighter because my upper body will suffer from that. I said, absolutely. I said, you're where you are right now with your conditioning was perfect for your frame. You know, yes, you need to be tighter on your lower half, but if you were tighter on your lower half, you're going to look stringy up top. So your coach brought you in correctly because if you, you, you don't have the density and you don't have the muscle in your glutes to be able to stick to sustain that kind of conditioning on your upper half. And she completely agreed. Like she, she pointed that out too. I was like, 
like I said, incredible that she can see that as a first time competitor, right? Like, but, <laughs> you know, right? I'm like, but at, at, at the same time, she was, I mean, she was thrilled. She was ec- ecstatic with the fourth place, fourth, fourth place placing at the show and all of that. But it was just like, she looked, she looked incredible. And the fact that she can see that, like, you know, that those are the things that, that we talk about. Like she was, yeah, she needed to be tighter, but she knows that's not about coming in leaner. That's about her putting more size on, on her glutes. Right. That's a great point. That's a really great point. Mm-hmm. And sometimes too, like with my client, Ashley, that was at USC's, my eye and her front pose goes right to her rib cage because mm-hmm. she has to arch so much right now to give yep. me a glute in that front pose. So what's, what's, what, what is going to fix all of this? growing more glutes right so and she knew that coming off stage you know she knew that was going to be her feedback literally sandy said perfect conditioning you just got to figure out that rib cage and she needs more glutes i'm like yeah as soon as she has more more glutes i'm going to fix that and then i'm also going to fix the rib cage so it's sometimes you have to like one you have to grow one part to kind of fix all of it Mm -hmm. you know because you can only pose what what you got you know i think a lot of people over pose to show what or create a glute or create a tie-in but they're actually making themselves feel flat so again a lot of the times it's just about growing right we're in the sport of bodybuilding this is not a sport of instant gratification it takes time especially for those of us that are natural you have 10 times more time and you have to be 100% on everything and Mm -hmm. be willing to take off seasons your first few years when you when you're new to the sport like you have to be willing to take that time off so that preps get easier the Mm -hmm. shape gets easier all it it helps everything on on a on a complete level and having the realistic viewpoint like you just said too because that was the other thing that that this girl said as well she said um oh i have to Oh, I have a meeting. I have a thing in five minutes. I didn't even realize. <laughs> I thought it was tomorrow night. So we're gonna we're gonna wrap this thing up real quick. I have an okay. I have an onboarding meeting in in five minutes. <laughs> I didn't okay. realize. I thought it was Tuesday. Cool. What I was gonna say. Did you think it was Tuesday? Because Jamie also thought it was Tuesday this morning. So no, wherever I thought Mars that the meeting, you guys came from. I thought it. the meeting was on was on Tuesday. I didn't got realize it. it was today. So okay, guys, got guess what? We're gonna end out right now. Because <laughs> I gotta get usually on Zoom. This is me. This is, I know, right? It's me, so I gotta I got get on it. Zoom in five minutes. So this was. Uh, I was gonna say. I'm gonna end out my thought. My thought that I was gonna say with her was that she knows that she has to grow upper glutes so she wants to go into off season and come back to USA's and win the overall next year. So that's that's what, what she was gonna say. So that's where <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> there we go. That's a good way to end it. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, I gotta get in this call in, in four minutes now. All right, well we love you, Sean. And- <laughs> All right, cool. You have so a great meeting. <laughs> yeah. Like, comment, subscribe. This is episode 49. Right? Yeah, 49. Yeah. And we'll see you guys again next week. <laughs> Ladies, I cannot believe we are at 50 episodes next week. So we want to make the 50th episode all about you and your questions. So please comment below any question that you want to ask us. There's no silly questions, big or small, whatever it might be. We want to make this all about you. So ask away, comment below, comment, comment, comment. All of your questions for Behind the Bikini for me and Jordan. And we'll see you next week. Thank you.